So friends, welcome back after the break. We will start with AS1 disclosure of accounting policies. Okay. So this standard basically deals with disclosure aspect and what are we trying to disclose? We are just trying to disclose the accounting policies of the organization. Okay. So why are these disclosures required? Why do we need to disclose what is the accounting policy that has been followed by the company? See, if I have a balance sheet in front of me, which shows that the property plant and equipment held by us are of 4 lakh rupees and uh, there are some investments which are worth 5 lakh then there is some stock which is worth 10 lakhs and then there are some debtors let's say of 2 lakhs and then there are other current assets let's say 1 lakh now we have an equity worth 2 lakh non-current liabilities worth 6 lakhs and there are current liabilities 10 lakh I forgot to write reserves and surplus 3 lakhs ok so there is a balance sheet that has been given to us and if I ask you that uh, can you interpret the balance sheet and give an analysis whether the company is performing good or not how is the performance of the company is it adequate is it at par with the competitors is it good or not so it is something you will not be able to comment even if I am giving you the balance sheet my friends even if I give you a profit and loss account accompanied with the same you will not be able to uh, comment on the same what is the reason because we don't know any we don't have any information about the property plant and equipment we have no information about the investments the stock the debtors we don't have any information about any of the items that is present in front of us but if I give you the disclosure that the investments held by the company are long term in nature and the market prices are decline, now you can comment on the same. Debtors are outstanding for the last one year, now you can comment on the same. The stock that is available with us is obsolete non movable item. So if when I say something like this, you are able to comment on the concepts. Now what I have told you are the disclosures that are required. So where do you show these disclosures? Firstly, there is some general purpose financial statements as we had discussed that are required on which the accounting standards are required to be implemented. The first is balance sheet. The second is profit and loss account. The third is cash flow statement for those to whom it is mandatory to prepare cash flow statement and there is something called as notes to accounts my friends this notes to accounts is where we deal with the disclosure aspect correct this is the place where we deal with the disclosure aspect and it is this note to account under which we are going to talk about AS1 where we are going to disclose our accounting policies disclosure of accounting policies okay so this is where we are trying to concentrate under the uh, when I talk about the standard AS1 so the first aspect is what is accounting policies how have we accounted for the various aspects is what we uh, what the accounting policies are if I talk about valuation of stock so this is an accounting policy that we are following that we are going to value our stock this is the accounting policy that has been followed by the company okay depreciation of plant and machinery depreciation okay I should not talk about this depreciation of plant and machinery right now there is valuation of stock and then uh, there is uh, accounting for decommissioning cost okay what is exactly decommissioning cost this we are going to deal in AS 10 so we will uh, look at that aspect over there so there are various such points on which we see how we are going to do the accounting con uh, how what is the accounting concept that we are going to apply that will be the policy of the company and how we are going to do the same is the method of applying those accounting policies so when I talk about disclosures 
deals with disclosures of only significant accounting policies. We don't deal with all insignificant accounting policies as well. We are only concerned about significant material accounting policies. Now, what are accounting policies? We please delete the first point. I'll tell you why I have uh, deleted this point when we'll be discussing AS 10. Okay. Treatment of expenditure during construction. Now, whenever construction is going on, how are we going to account for the expense portion? Okay, are we applying a percentage completion method or is it degree of completion that uh, that two third, one third notional profit aspect that we have studied when we were in CA inter? Okay, conversion or translation of foreign currency items. How do we convert the foreign currency items? What kind of operations are held by the company? Like, are, do we call it integral operations? Do we call it non-integral operations? Is the accounting policy is the accounting aspect of the company? Valuation of inventory. How are we, what is the treatment of goodwill that we carry out in our books? Investments, how are we valuing it? Whether it cost, whether it NRV. Retirement benefit, this is something we are going to deal with AS15. This is going to be a new standard for you. you we haven't learned this earlier. Recognition of profits on long term contracts. On long term contracts, how the profit is to be recognized. Okay. Fixed assets, how do we value our fixed assets? And what is the treatment of contingent liabilities in our books? So there can be various examples. But if they are significant, we are going to disclose the same as to what have we done, how the accounting has been done for the following corresponding items. Okay. So this standard is basically required only for disclosure aspect. So what do we deal over here? Disclosure of existing accounting policies then there is disclosure of change in existing accounting policies. So if we are changing any of these policies, if we change any of the existing accounting policies that we are following, there will be a problem, consistency will be hampered. Okay, we are going to discuss this word consistency. Accounting aspects are being changed, the way in which we used to present the financial statement is changing. Okay, so that is the reason we need to give a disclosure. What is the disclosure that is required? Why change in policy? My friends, you are not allowed to change the policy in a haphazard way. If you wish that yes, I should change the accounting policy today. Management feels that uh, we are bored of uh, following the old accounting policies. Let's shift toward the new method. Let's do something exciting. It's not like that. You cannot do it something like this. If ICAI permits you, you can change the policy. If law says, any statutory law of the country says that you need to change the accounting policy of the following aspect, like Companies Act 2013 says for depreciation. Okay. So, you will have to change the accounting policy or it can be for better presentation of financial statement which needs to be proved. Okay. So, why have we changed the policy? Only under any of these three aspects. So, that has to be specified. And we have to specify the financial impact of the same as to as per the old policy, how much amount would have we recognized in our PNL or balance sheet? And as per the new accounting policy, what is the amount that we have recognized in our balance sheet or PNL? So as per the old policy, the new policy, what is the change in the amount? Like if we were valuing the inventory as per last in first out till now and the closing stock had turned out to be 10 lakh rupees. From current year, we are moving towards first in first out. So, the closing stock has valued to be 15 lakh rupees, 10 lakh, 15 lakh, 5 lakh rupees, the profit has increased. So, this is the financial impact that we are telling. We used to follow last in first out. Now, the company with change in accounting policy because the LIFO has not been permitted by ICA anymore has shifted towards first in first out because of which the profits have increased by 5 lakh rupees. So, this is the financial impact that has been disclosed by the auditor. Okay. Or maybe the management is going to disclose the same. My friends, implementing an accounting policy for the first time doesn't mean change in accounting policy. Okay, it doesn't mean that it is a change in accounting policy. For example, now suppose we were in the manufacturing business since last 20 years. Since last 20 years, company has been doing manufacturing. And company has purchased various plots of land under which they were planning to expand the manufacturing activity. There was a change in management and the new management decided that we should restrict our earlier manufacturing activities to the level it has achieved. 
we should not expand it anymore. But the company has purchased various plots of land under which they had plans to implement factory in future. Management thinks that well, now what we should do is we should start developing these lands. So earlier these lands were shown under property plant and equipment, but now the with the change in management they have plans to uh, develop land which means land will now be ordinarily purchased and sold in the normal course of business that makes it inventory so that makes it an inventory so this is the first time implementation not a change in accounting policy first time company is going to deal in lands so now land is going to be accounted for under inventory so this a reclassification has taken place but there is not a change in accounting policy this is just a first time adoption of any accounting policy related to land valuation as inventory as inventory so i hope you are understanding the difference between what do we mean by change in policy and adopting the policy for the first time so what is change we had stock in our books the manufacturing concern had stock let's say of steel they were steel manufacturers steel in the books they used to follow first in first out now they have a plans to follow weighted average so there's a change in accounting policy we were already following a policy we have changed the method of adoption but something which we were not doing earlier now we have started doing the same so we were not dealing in plots of lands earlier we were not ordinarily buying and selling the land now we have shifted towards the concept of buying and selling the land in ordinary course of business this is the first time adoption of accounting policy so there's a difference okay so we can move ahead with this uh, before I move ahead a small example related to this first time adoption we'll see and then I'll tell you what uh, how what are the points this standard is going to cover okay the first question ABC limited is making provision for non moving stock based on number of issues for the last 12 months last 12 months up to 31st March 2011 company wants to provide during the year 31st March 2012 based on technical evaluation total value of stock 100 lakhs provision required based on 12 months issue 12 months issue 3.5 as per technical evaluation 2.5 so what were we doing we used to make provision for stock but we used to make it based on last 12 months consumption last 12 months record so as per last 12 months record if 100 lakh rupees inventory we are holding 3.5 is generally the provision required for the first time we have called a technical valuer and we asked him you tell us what is the non moving stock what is the provision required in stock so he told us for the first time we are doing it and he told us that the amount required is 2.5 is this change in accounting policy are we changing the method of accounting my friends what were we doing earlier sir making provision what are we making what are we doing now sir making provision in either case you are making the provision you are not changing the method in which the provision has been made only the amount of provision the what will be the policy should I make the provision or not this will be a policy how we are making the provision cannot be told uh, cannot be said to be a policy it was as per the past tech, uh, 12 months or technical valuation will only change our estimates towards the future aspect as to in future there will be a non moving stock which we will as per 12 months record to be 3.5 but technical after technical evaluation the technical expert says that it will be 2.5 lakh so it, the non moving is for the future is for the future the out of 100 lakh 2.5 lakh will not be utilized in future it is purely an estimate and not a change in policy okay so what do we mean by this estimate what do we mean by this policy we will deal, uh, deal again with all these aspects in detail in AS5 okay we don't need to worry about this aspect with CA final as it is a CA finalist should not worry about AS1 AS4 AS5 these are small standards okay what you should worry about are the standards we are discussing in detail okay so we'll move it now sir you told us the standard talks about disclosure and then you told us that only significant disclosures are required so what do you mean by significance what are the disclosures that are required or all accounting policies required to be disclosed how will I determine that this accounting policy is significant or not so this standard has divided it into two parts first part policies which don't need disclosure unless 
changed i should say or hampered so there are certain policies which you don't need to give any disclosure why sir why no because investor is aware about these accounting policies being followed by uh, on random basis he always feels that company is going to follow this accounting policy there are certain cases where if these policies are not followed then disclosure is required then you have to give a disclosure and the second aspect that company deals it policies that require disclosure basis of selecting the policy basis of delict selecting the policy so we'll start with the first aspect first policies that don't need any disclosure so one of them is consistency okay the second aspect is accrual and third aspect is going concern we we'll look at it one by one consistency the accounting policy that you used to follow in the past are the accounting policies we are going to continue to use in future we were using we were valuing the stock as per first in first out we'll continue to value it as per first in first out this is consistency we used to depreciate as per straight line we'll future in future will continue to depreciate at straight line consistency we used to depreciate under straight line at 10 percent we'll continue to depreciate at straight line 10 percent is consistency okay now we used to value our investments at cost we'll continue to value it at cost we used to include transaction cost in the investment we'll continue to include transaction cost in investments these are consistencies the policies that were followed earlier are the same policy that we are continuing to follow but if any such policy is changed give the disclosure so there is, is uh, the first part is policies we don't need disclosure consistency if the old policies are being followed don't give any disclosure but give disclosure if you have changed the policy okay so from straight line 10 percent to 25 percent give disclosure from straight line to wdv give disclosure from cost model to revaluation model give disclosure so these are the aspects which which are hampered i should say or chained i should say when i talk about consistency i hope this part this aspect is clear then there are certain students who tell me sir the company has been uh, incorporated for the first time and it is pre uh, preparing its first balance sheet how should i talk about consistency so my friend don't talk about consistency then sir what is the disclosure that i'll give i'll discuss that in the second point don't worry about that part okay consistency is only for the existing businesses who have already given certain disclosures earlier okay so i can say consistency is understood by the students the second aspect is accrual accrual means mercantile basis of accounting if we have received a sale order on 31st march 2017 the goods are not ready in stock but they will be ready by 2nd april can i record the sale on 31st march 2017 no i cannot record it why i cannot record it because accrual concept mercantile concept says that unless and until the risk and reward has not been transferred sale will not be recorded even though you have received the order sir i have received the money in advance still you cannot record the sales because the goods are not ready available with you so sale will not be recorded so why such accrual concept is followed because by chance the goods if in future the goods are not were not even ready the sale will need to be reversed so why do such a thing record it when the goods will be ready okay so accrual concept talks about not only income it talks about receipt as well it talks about expenses as well it talks about each and every aspect uh, that is uh, related to profit and loss account that if expense is related to future show it in future if the income is related to future show it in future if the income is of today though not received it is going to be received tomorrow still you will have to show the sale if the expense is related to today though to be paid in future show it today <coughs> so that is the concept of accrual mercantile basis accounting last and most important aspect is going concern going concern so what do i mean by going concern 
we have established the business, we have started the business and we have intention to continue the business over the future. So the investor who is going to invest in the company knows that the company is going to continue in future. But what if the management has plans to close the business in the coming 12 months? Management says we are going to close the business in the coming 12 months. Tell me my friend, if the disclosure is not given, what will happen? The investor will feel that the company is going to continue, he will keep investing and one fine day the management says we are closing the business. What? I just invested in your company. So what? We are closing down our business. This should not happen. The investor should know when the company has plans to close down the business. So that is the point at which there is a disclosure required for going concern. What is the disclosure that is required for going concern? Management's reason for going concern hamper. So the reason for which we had started the business is over. Or maybe there is no more demand of the stock in future. Or maybe our company has gone into liquidation. Can be any reason. Okay. And the second aspect is significant assets and liabilities. Remember only significant assets and liabilities to be restated. To be restated. So if the going concern is hampered, we need to reclassify, restate the significant, all significant assets and all significant liabilities. So that is what going concern talks about if it is hampered. If it not hampered, no need to give the disclosure that we are preparing our financial statements as per going concern. We don't need it. Investor understands that. But if hampered, you need to present the same. Sir, what if management says that going concern is not hampered, but the auditor feels that the going concern is hampered, then generally in such a scenario, such scenario has been dealt with in audit. You should qualify the report. You should qualify the report. Then a new student turns up with a doubt, sir, how will the auditor come to know that the going concern is hampered? See my friend, if the net worth is let's say negative, we have seen that there was a fire in the factory's warehouse, in the company's warehouse and all stock is burnt, they had no insurance and no capital adequacy to uh, refill the same, renew the same. So can be the reason, there can be a hell lot of reasons that auditor may feel that going concern is hampered, he will say the management, I feel that the going concern is hampered, management says no, we don't feel that the going concern is hampered, auditor will qualify the report. Sir, won't it give a negative impact in the mind of the investor? I would say, but rather it would make the investor cautious. And if the auditor is wrong, firstly, why will auditor be wrong? Why will auditor without any reason put in that we, I feel that the going concern is hampered? Why will he do that? But if auditor is doing such a thing, there is something in audit that you have read that if the auditor has qualified the report, the management has to give the reason of qualification. Then the management is going to give the reason, justification why we feel that going concern is not hampered. So investor has the point from management as well and they can ask it in the AGM as well. So don't worry, qualification is good. People can ask, qualification doesn't mean a negative point, it is not a negative point, it's just a difference of opinion between the auditor and the management. That's it. Okay. So instead of, no, it's not just about going concern, it's about all the three points. If any of the point is not followed and management says that we are not going to give the disclosure, auditor will have to qualify the report. It is your duty to qualify the report. Okay. Okay. So this was the first aspect and related to first aspect, we'll see certain questions. First one, 1 1.2. Omega Limited has branch office in India since 1994. In March 2004, it decided to close the operations, close the operations in India. There is no disagreement, okay, no disagreement on going concern assumption between management and auditor. Auditor says going concern is hampered, management says yes, we accept that the going concern is hampered. This is a branch office with skeleton, skeleton operations. What do you mean by skeleton operations? No significant transactions. There are no significant assets and liabilities, okay, no significant assets and liabilities besides the branch operates in rented premise. So you don't even have a significant asset premise in your books. Reply, should going concern assumption be qualified? Tell me my friend, are you going to qualify the report? When do you qualify the report? When there is disagreement between management and auditor. Is there a disagreement? No, management accepts that going concern is hampered. So are you going to qualify the report? No, we are not going to qualify the report, okay. 
so i'm not giving a detailed answer because such questions are not asked in the exam to you people you just need to know you should have an idea if by chance asked in the exam how will we answer first thing we read the question we know it is about as1 as per as1 introduction to accounting a disclosure of accounting policies when is a going concern hampered you need to write uh, when do we qualify the report qualify report is qualified by the auditor when there is disagreement of opinion between the management and the auditor in the given question there is no disagreement hence no qualification required okay certain question uh, certain student must be saying sir wait wait let me let us write let us write don't worry my friend it is a very basic question and there is a basic pattern of writing in the exam first always give the uh, first always quote the standard number if you are not sure about the can standard number or you are confused about the standard number leave it don't write a standard number which you are not sure but you have written it so if it was as1 you have written as per as3 the checker is not going to check your question paper any further he'll see the student has zero knowledge about the accounting standards it cut it over there though the answer may be correct marks will be gone so if you are not sure about the standard number leave it it's good that you quote the standard number first thing standard number second what does the standard say about the topic that is being asked third is your conclusion okay so should i go to the next point will assets liabilities required to be restated which are the assets and liabilities that are required to be restated significant is there any significant asset or liability no significant operations no significant assets no significant liabilities rented premise nothing significant so is there any restatement required no again the same answer as per as1 if going concern is hampered significant assets and liabilities are required to be restated okay here there are no significant assets are given in the question hence no restatement required so this is how you are going to answer the same we we'll look at the next question 1.3 partnership firm formed to secure tenders floated by bsnl for publication of telephone directories for 99 2000 the tender is for 5 years it failed to uh, failed to back publication of other cities you only got it for one city pune 5 years contract will expire on 31st december they have even given you the date on which the contract will be expired you are auditing for the year 2002 2003 you are auditing for 2002 2003 should the going concern be hampered so generally what we see in this case is there is no negative net worth or something like that we'll see whether the company has business available for the coming 12 months so when i talk about 2002 2003 for the coming 12 months 12 months ends on 31st march 2004 okay 2002 2003 31st March 2004, and you have backed the publication till 31st December 2004. Please keep the dates in mind. From 2003, you have one year. Sufficient work is available. We have sufficient work available for one and a half year right now. So, going concern will not be hampered. Will your answer change for three four? I feel yes because up to 31st December, we don't have the coming. We don't have business for the coming 12 months. so there is no clarity about this aspect do we need a business for the whole 12 months remaining 12 months or any period during the 12 months if the business is available going concern will not be hampered so we don't have a clarity about it there is you haven't backed uh, any business for any other circles and we know that contract is going to expire in the coming 6 months uh, not 6 months 9 months rather up to 31st december i feel it is within 12 months so going concern will be hampered so we can look at the next question vinayak chemical limited government company engaged in production of fertilizer and various nitrogenous chemicals as per the company's policy expense incurred up to 25000 up to 25000 relating to future period relating to future period as expense during the current year as a statutory auditor of the company opines that company has not complied with as1 tell me my friend has the company complied with as1 sir expenses of up to 25000 related to future period we have give that means it is a prepaid expense sir prepaid expense you have shown it in the current year itself how are you following the correct accounting policy it is wrong you haven't followed the correct accounting policy okay as we said uh, actually this aspect should not be dealt right now it is related to another point the point is materiality we are going to discuss it in ahead if some expenses immaterial we don't fall we don't see or it's not the duty of the auditor to see whether accounting policies are followed or not because we only talk about significant accounting policies 
Here the expense is 25,000. We do not know whether it is significant or not. Nothing given in the question. So, if the amount is insignificant, if the amount is insignificant, we do not need to see whether accounting policies AS1 has been complied with or not. But if the amount is significant, it is material, then the auditor can comment that AS1 has not been complied with. Being a production of fertilizer and nitrogenous company, 25,000 I feel is an immaterial amount. But nothing given in question, we will answer accordingly. So, we have next question, A limited filed an application with high court to merge with subsidiary B, merge with subsidiary B from 1st April 2015. You have just filed an application right now. It is not been approved. As per the books of accounts, a loan given by A to B, loan given by A to B and B has given assets to A on lease, B has given assets on lease, A has given loan to B and B has given assets on lease to A. In view of the aforesaid pending application, A limited neither disclosed nor neither disclosed interest income nor lease rental. Now, A says, we have filed an application for the merger of the company. It is supposed to merge in us. For the year end, we have not shown any interest income, neither have we shown any lease rental paid. So, is the treatment correct? So, my friend, AS1 never allows you that since you are going to merge, do not show the treatments right now. Since your application is pending, you do not need to show any of such treatments. It is not like that. Accounting policy has to be followed as mandatory irrespective of the fact what is going to happen in future. I cannot apply there is a concept that we are going to deal a bit later substance over form cannot be applied over here. Your application is pending it can be rejected also ok. So, since it is going to be merged we are not going to show such ex income and expenses is incorrect investor is not getting sufficient information in such a case. So, to inform the investor you will have to show that interest income and lease rental both of them ok. So, this is the standards which do not the policy that do not need disclosure, but if hampered if changed disclosure is required. So, we will move towards the second aspect policies that require disclosure. So, what are the basis on which we decide that the disclosure is required to be given ok. So, we can move ahead with another three points ok. Let us see. First point is substance over form. Second point is prudence and third point is materiality. Okay, so what do we mean by substance over form? Substantially what we can see may be different from the legal aspect. So, what we can see is considered for accounting purpose rather than the legal aspect of the same. Sir, what do you mean by that? In C enter, you may have seen a question that A purchased a house from B. He has given the money and taken the key of the house. Sale deed is pending. Year end, sale deed is pending. Should sale be recorded or not? So, substantially I can see that the house has been transferred by A to B sorry by B to A ok. So, substantially the house has been transferred we know that the house has been transferred. This means that even though legally it has not been transferred substance over form we know that it is going to be transferred in future that means uh, the sale of sale should be recorded immediately. So, this is the concept of substance over form substantially what we see is accounted for rather than the legal aspect. Prudence. My friends, we are going to deal with this aspect ahead as AS4 and AS29, ok. There was one more thing, uh, earlier we had talked about consistency. Consistency is dealt with in AS5, where we talk about policy and estimate. Now, we will talk about prudence, which, talks, uh, which has been further de discussed in detail AS4, AS29, a very first base on which we decide what is the disclosure that is required. If there are anticipated losses, if there are anticipated not actual losses, anticipated losses we recognize it immediately ok. But if there are anticipated gains we do not recognize it immediately. This is the concept of prudence. So, what do you mean by anticipated and actual? See my friend, uh, 
first understand the concept of anticipation every day you walk out of your house you pick up your two wheeler or four wheeler you drive your way to the classes you attend the classes and then either you go to office or you go back home it can so happen it can so happen that on the way you meet an accident see i am not intending such a thing don't get angry it is just an example okay to understand what is the concept of prudence it may so happen it can it may so happen that on the way you meet an accident and if you meet an accident there will be certain expenses related to the same so you may anticipate that what happens if the accident takes place around 2 lakh rupees expense will have to be incurred i'll show a 2 lakh rupees provision in my books because prudence says so this is not anticipated loss okay anticipation should be related to any past event because of which we are expecting a loss in future now what do i mean by that while driving from a uh, home to factory now let me exchange the example worker while driving from home to factory met an accident met an accident on year and he was to be admitted in hospital now we don't know whether he is going to survive or not we are not sure whether he is going to survive or not so year end there is an anticipation that if he does not survive we will have to pay a huge amount and even if he survives we have to pay a huge amount to the hospital ok so here the concept that we are talking about is anticipated loss so it will be recognized immediately though he has not died ok so I am not wishing to be for him to die it is just an example though he has not died we will provide the hospital expenses in our books because we are anticipating it may so happen it may so happen so uh, again a detailed discussion when we will talk about ES4 and ES29 and the last and the most important concept is materiality so anything that is material has to be disclosed separately sir what do you mean by materiality anything generally generally it is 10 percent or more of turnover so we have read in PNL that any expense which is generally 10 percent or more now 10 percent may differ from company to company for some company material may be 5 percent so any company for whom this amount is more than a particular percentage has to be shown separately for example uh, now we are in the business we are in the business of running virtual classes so running virtual classes means that we will have to incur a huge printing and stationary cost so notes is a huge printing and stationary cost it has to be disclosed separately in a PNL printing and stationary but if I talk about the same aspect in case of a normal computer shop so for them the only printing and stationary expense is the bill that they have to provide so printing and stationary cost comparatively is very minimal they can club it under the head office expenses or miscellaneous expenses doesn't matter okay so you can see the difference for some people a cost may be material for some it may be material but this is not the definition of materiality what is the definition of materiality anything that has an impact on shareholders decision anything that will have an impact on shareholders decision whether you should continue with the company's shares or not whether you should continue with company shares or not is material anything that will have let me add one more word majority shareholders anything that will have an impact on majority shareholders whether they should hold the shares of the company or uh, they should continue or not okay so how do you decide the same now suppose there are t expenses of a company which is around 10 crore so 10 crore rupees worth t ah there are 50 to 60 thousand workers working over there so every day they drink tea two times a day so it comes out to around 10 crore the company has a turnover of 1000 crore so is the expense material so we will say it is a material expense not to be shown separately 100 crore can be material has to be shown separately company was caught in a scam and under the scam they had to pay a penalty of 1 rupee my friend 1 rupee only 1 rupee is it required to be shown separately 1000 crore turnover so you will say no sir not required to be shown separately within 10 percent but don't you think that 1 rupee has an impact on majority shareholders the company is copped in a scam company has done a scam yes it does make a difference 
it does make a difference in the mind in the thinking of the investor so it has to be shown separately some students must be confused sir t expenses were 10 crore for some shareholders it will have a very big impact like if i talk about a company like tata for company tata company shares are purchased by chartered accountants budding chartered accountants like you as well and an auto driver also sometimes purchases the shares of the tata if he wants to invest in a company so for a auto driver seeing that t expenses were 10 crore he say company is doing a fraud are you trying to understand what i am saying but as a chartered accountant or a budding chartered accountant like you you have the mentality you have the ability to understand yes 10 crore rupees can be the the case because 40 to 50000 people workers work over there so it can be such a big amount so sir now how to decide materiality who is the auditor going to think keep in mind the rickshaw wala the auto wala or the chartered accountants see the word that we have used is majority now you will have to take a judgment if 50% or more of the uh, uh, shareholders of the company have an impact from any particular point then you will have to show it separately or you don't need to show separately depends on the class of shareholders so if the class of shareholders are complete auto wallas in the company complete majority of them are auto wallas so you will have to show the expenses also separately okay so i hope the concept of materiality is clear over here so we'll look at some more questions related to these three concepts first one i think first line ah not visible over here please refer the notes X limited sold building to mini for 60 lakh for 60 lakh X has sold the building for 60 lakh on 30th September 2010 and gave the position you purchase the building you gave the position however documentation and legal formalities are pending that means it has not been registered in the name of mini limited till now due to this company has not recorded any sale company has not recorded any sale company has not recorded they haven't accounted for the sale only and shown the amount received as advance the amount that they have received they have shown it as advance it is the building is appearing in the books for 21 lakh on 31st March 2011 is the accounting treatment correct no which concept substance over form substantially we can see position is given money is received hence sale should be recorded immediately now what will the auditor do qualify the report he will say that what should have been done and then financial impact tell me my friend what is the financial impact over here the sale will be increased by difference between 60 and 25 60 and 25 35 lakhs sale profits will increase by sorry not sale profit profits will increase by 35 lakh the financial impact that you need to show so look at the next question xyz is engaged in the business of financial services and is undergoing tight liquidity position since most of the assets are blocked in various claims xyz has accepted intercorporate deposits intercorporate deposits so you have a tight liquidity position and you have accepted various deposits from various companies intercorporate and doing its best to settle the dues there are claims of various rates of interest from lenders from the due date of intercorporate deposit to the date of repayment okay from the due date that means there was a particular date on which these intercorporate deposit was supposed to be repaid but the company has not repaid that's why there is a written that from the due date interest is being calculated from the due date of intercorporate deposit to the date of repayment the date on which company actually paid the amount the company has provided interest as per the terms of contract till the due date company has provided uh, provided means not paid accounted accounted for the interest till the date of due date and a note for non-provision note for non-provision of interest non-provision you haven't made any accounting for the interest on the due date to the date of repayment from you have accounted for the interest till the date of due date you haven't repaid the amount but you haven't accounted for the interest from due date to the date of repayment now you must be confused we need to read ahead on account of uncertainty existing regarding uncertainty existing regarding the determination of amount and absence of specific legal obligation at present as per the terms of contract the company considers these claims are in the nature of claim not acknowledged as debt now what does the company mean by that company says we don't know what is the interest that is to be paid and legally as per the contract we are supposed to pay the interest till the due date till the due date now you are asking us we haven't repaid the loan well and fine but we are only obliged to pay the interest till the due date we are not obliged to pay it till the date of repayment so we will not provide for the interest is the 
पॉइंट ऑफ द कंपनी करेक्ट इज इट टीनेबल सो इट इज नॉट करेक्ट द कॉन्सेप्ट इज प्रूडेंस एज पर प्रूडेंस सच इंटरेस्ट एक्सपेंसिस हैज टू बी प्रोवाइडेड फॉर ओके सो लुक एट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सी लिमिटेड हैज टेकन अ लोन ऑफ टेन करोड़ रुपीज फ्रॉम आईसीआईसीआई इट्स बैंकर्स हैव गिवन गारंटी ऑफ द लोन सी लिमिटेड मॉडगेज द फिक्स एसेट मॉडगेज द फिक्स एसेट सी लिमिटेड हैज डिस्क्लोज इट हैज अनसिक्योर्ड लोन वॉट इज इट सींग सी लिमिटेड हैज टेकन अ लोन फ्रॉम आई सी आई सी आई एंड इट्स बैंकर हैज गिवन द गारंटी हैज गिवन इन द क्वेश्चन C Limited has mortgaged its fixed asset with its banker against this loan, and disclosed the loan as unsecured. Disclosed this loan as unsecured. Is the treatment correct? You say, sir, why unsecured? It is secured. We have mortgaged the fixed asset against it. My friend, tell me, a company, company. Has taken a loan from the bank and the director has given the guarantee of the same. Is it secured or unsecured loan? So direct guarantee by director by outsider is considered to be unsecured loan. Correct. So company, if suppose has given its fixed asset to the director against such guarantee, against such guarantee, does it make the loan secured? That's what the question is actually all about. Legally, the loan is unsecured. Because the guarantee is given by a third party outsider, your banker. Your banker is not an inside party. But on substance, we know that for this guarantee, we have given the mortgage. We have mortgaged the fixed asset, though with another party. So the concept is substance over form. Substance over form. Okay, you will write down over there in the answer. The first line will not be visible over here. Write it over here. Substance. over form loan is secured okay because fixed asset has been mortgaged again the same asset though with another banker though with another banker so this is what the standard deals with there is one more question rather two more questions the intercorporate deposit is a repeat question one more question you may go through the same it talks about the financial impact i am not discussing the same question and there are some more questions as well we'll move ahead and we'll talk about indian accounting standard 1 presentation of financial statements okay uh, again heading is not visible kindly cooperate there are certain issues when we are uh, use the we are going for digitization presentation of financial statement this is the first point now you need to understand the difference difference is presentation and the accounting standard that we deals with is disclosure where have you dealt with the presentation of financial statements earlier try to think try to think sir schedule 3 schedule 3 gives us the presentation format under companies act has accounting standard ever given you a presentation format no presentation format has been given by accounting standards ever indian accounting standard the very first standard tells you how should your pnl look like how should your balance sheet look like how should your cash flow statement look like so this is the first difference let me come down to second difference how should your statement of change in equity look like statement of change in equity and how should your statement of other comprehensive income look like statement of comprehensive income statement of comprehensive income sir what is the statement of comprehensive income this is a new name that has been given to the profit and loss account now profit and loss account will be accompanied by like first we'll make a profit and loss and then it will be accompanied by one more short statement which is a statement of other comprehensive income so statement of comprehensive income will include pnl and then below it other comprehensive income okay so we have discussed three differences rather first difference is in the name okay second difference is uh, as1 and as1 deals with disclosure and as1 deals with presentation it gives a format third difference is there are two additional statements when we talk about indian accounting standard statement of change in equity and statement of comprehensive income sir what is statement of change in equity equity includes other equity and what do i mean by other equity there is a terminology reserve and surplus that you have been using till now 
सो शेयर कैपिटल प्लस रिजर्व एंड सरप्लस इज नोन इन द इंडियन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड एज इक्विटी प्लस अदर इक्विटी सो एनी चेंजेस इन द इक्विटी दैट मीन्स एनी कैपिटल दैट हैज बीन बॉट इन और द कैपिटल दैट हैज बीन बॉट बैक ओके एनी प्रॉफिट एडिशन ड्यूरिंग द ईयर एनी कैपिटल रिजर्व एडिशन ड्यूरिंग द ईयर रिवैल्यूएशन सरप्लस एडिशन ड्यूरिंग द ईयर एवरीथिंग फॉर्म पार्ट ऑफ पार्ट ऑफ अदर इक्विटी so that's what this statement deals with okay okay so now the complete set includes statement of change in equity and then there's pnl with other comprehensive income and we have one more statement this is required in case of change in policy indian accounting standard as a very big penal clause when you are changing the policy if you change the policy the accounting of such policy has to be changed retrospectively sir retrospectively from the date such accounting policy will have its first impact in the first financial statement sir that means if i change from fifo to weighted average from the date the company was incorporated we'll have to restate all the balance sheets yes and also present all these balance sheets no first aspect is yes you'll have to re account for retrospectively but the second aspect is you'll only have to give a opening balance sheet extra opening balance sheet sir which year opening balance sheet uh it has the opening balance sheet required is for the comparative period of the previous year comparative period of the previous year that is presented so what do you mean by that see we had discussed statement uh, the balance sheet data to be presented i don't think i have discussed that suppose the applicability of indian accounting standard comes from 1st april 2017 the date from which the applicability comes first we are i am talking about applicability so there is a standard in ds 101 first time adoption which says that you will have to present three balance sheets one is 17 18 so this is your current year 16 17 will be your previous year and there is one more balance sheet that is to be provided which is 1st april 2016 this date will be considered to be the date of transition this will be your first indias balance sheet though the date of transition is 1st april 17 but indias will be implemented from 1st april 2016 and this is the first balance sheet that we are going to restate okay so this will be as per indias 101 now in future if you change the policy at any point if you change the policy now suppose on 2020 2021 i change my policy so this is the current year the comparative will be 2019 2020 and if i change the policy i'll have to give one more balance sheet again only if i change the policy first april 2019 so first date is when india s was transited we have to give three balance sheets and in future if you change the policy you'll have to give three balance sheets but in future if you don't change the policy you don't have to give three balance sheets like for the year 2018 2019 to be the current year the previous year will be 2017 2018 no opening balance sheet of 1st april 2017 required okay 2019 2020 no policy change 2018 2019 previous year comparative to be given 2020 2021 you change the policy you change the policy you give three balance sheets so every time you give the change the policy you give three balance sheets and accounting is done retrospectively okay don't worry about the retrospective aspect no one is going to ask you the question you just need to know what is going to happen okay still we'll deal with some questions practical aspect don't worry yes 5 india is 8 along with it so what are the fundamental accounting assumptions now it moved toward the uh, towards another difference already discussed four difference first difference of name second difference india s1 talks about presentation as talks about disclosure third difference there are two additional statements added statement of comprehensive income statement of change in equity fourth difference opening balance sheet in case of change in policy is required okay now the fundamental accounting assumption if i talk about under indian accounting standard only two only two fundamental accounting assumptions what are the two uh, fundamental accounting assumptions going concern and uh, materiality uh, uh, accrual accrual sorry accrual there is no concept of consistency not required consistency is as per the indian accounting standard to be followed 
and then there are various aspects that are dealt with in NDS 1 presentation of true and fair view which is well and fine we always talk about that going concern is the same accrual concept is the same materiality is same offsetting is new can I net off two transactions with each other so Indian accounting standard says if permitted by other Indian accounting standard well and fine else you cannot if any Indian accounting standard says that netting off is permitted you can do it else you cannot frequency of reporting not dealt with under accounting standard India says that generally it is 12 months generally but it can extend up to 15 months in case of consolidation not to be discussed over here comparatives are necessary compulsorily to be given under NDS given in NDS one only AS does not talk about comparative rather different accounting standard says whether comparatives are required to be given or not and consistency of presentation is not is this is not a fundamental accounting assumption is the difference that I am saying okay so other concepts are the same then how the presentation is done we have shown uh, generally when we talk about the current liabilities there is again a difference it is 12 months from reporting date so if something something is due within 12 months from the reporting date something which is due within 12 months within 12 months coming 12 months from the reporting date it is considered to be short term else long term sir how does it make a difference I will show you so first Feb 2017 there is a debtor this is 31st March 2017 and 31st March 2018 he is supposed to pay me on 1st March 2018 this debtor is supposed to pay me on 12 March 2018 and 7 months is my operating cycle so generally what we see is if something is to be received within 12 months from the reporting date it is considered to be current else long term under accounting standard so the date I will check is from first web 2017 so from first web the money that I am supposed to receive is after more than 12 months I am talking about accounting standards you are going to receive it in the 13th month so this is long term this is long term as per AS okay now if I talk about Indian accounting standard it talks about from reporting date and what is the reporting date over here it is 31st March 2017 the close of the financial year the money is supposed to be received within 12 months within 12 months so this is considered to be current here the difference lies when I talk about AS and India so one more difference difference is from the reporting date okay okay then there is statement of PNL other comprehensive income basically deals with revaluation surplus so this is new there was an asset in my books worth 10 lakh I revalued it by 2 lakh upwards revalued by 2 lakh upwards now the asset looks in my book at 12 lakh in accounting standard what you will do is fix asset account debit to revaluation reserve and where do you show this revaluation reserve directly in reserve and surplus we don't see it on the face of PNL so as an investor if I see there was an asset in the previous year 10 lakh now it is 12 lakh what he feels is company may have purchased 2 lakh rupees worth of assets if he has seen the schedule of fixed asset maybe he'll understand something if he doesn't see the schedule of fixed asset the only thing he'll understand is company has purchased assets worth 2 lakh and the profits have also increased by 2 lakh so he's happy company is earning good good profits he never came to know there was a revaluation unless he looks the schedule of reserve and surplus now when he looks at the face of PNL he'll see there is a revaluation that has been done in the statement of comprehensive income so now on the entry will be under Indian accounting standard property plant and equipment to other comprehensive income other comprehensive income to revaluation surplus then there are measurement of defined benefit plan this is something that we are going to discuss in AS 15 and if I talk about the NDS respective 19 okay gain or loss from financial statements of foreign operations so foreign operations were generally shown under reserves if you remember or PNL in case of integral PNL non integral reserves so now on it will be transferred to other comprehensive income equity measured at fair value so this is something that is related to financial instruments till you don't see the video of financial instruments I don't think this will be clear to you gain or loss on financial assets again the same portion effective portion of hedging again something related to financial in instruments options related to financial instruments forward contract related to financial instruments so I will not be able to explain these aspects till you see the video of India S32 107109 financial instruments okay so I'm not rushing through it you need to understand it will be discussed later okay so the fundamental accounting assumption is going concern and accrual under NDS 
AS has consistency as well. Let us not discuss ICDS, it has just been written for your reference. Applicability of accounting policies specific to NDS. So, there are various accounting policies if dealt with under NDS, you have to record, record accordingly. AS1 gives you three accounting policies on the basis of which disclosures are to be given. Okay. In the absence of standard, now if Indian accounting standard does not say an, about anything about any particular aspect, it does not say anything about any particular aspect, then how will you deal with the same? So, we will see uh, guidance notes that are available. We will refer to IAS international accounting standard, still not available, we can go to other standards, US GAAP. Still not available, what we can do is best industrial practice, how are the other people accounting, how are competitors accounting. Okay. So, maybe in future company will come up with such Indian accounting standard. So, that is what it deals with. Okay. So, now move, we will move towards 1.14 questions. Now, the questions that we are discussing are related to the balance sheet aspect. We need to understand what is operating cycle. What is operating cycle under Indian accounting standard? We are discussing as per Indian accounting standard. Now, operating cycle is something that if a product is due to be received within 12 months from the reporting date, within 12 months from reporting date, it is considered to be current. But if the operating cycle is more than 12 months, suppose the operating cycle is 2 years, you are a builder, building takes 2 years to complete. So, operating cycle is 2 years, so anything and everything that is due from the reporting date within 2, two years, within 2 years will be considered to be current, else non-current. That is what Indian accounting standard says, it also includes operating cycle. So, schedule 3 also says the same for those who have studied schedule 3. Yes, my friend, it says the same, do not worry. So, let us look at the question. X arrives at the following aspect, current account balance with bank 80 lakh of it 20 lakh is margin money against borrowing which is not freely available, not freely available for the period of 12 months, not freely available that means it is non-current, that means it is non-current. So, 60 is current and 20 is non-current. Let us look at another aspect, checks in hand 10 lakh is considered to be cash and cash equivalent. Bank balance in foreign bank where there is repatriation restriction, repatriation restrictions 10,000, it must be rupees 10,000, sorry 10,000 dollars, 10,000 dollars closing rate 62, closing rate 62. So, now there is a repatriation restriction, we question does not say when the restriction will be removed. So, in general I will assume it to be non-current. So, it will be 6 lakh 20 thousand considered to be non-current. Okay. Term deposit originally for 5 years remaining maturity 3 months, remaining maturity 3 months. So, from reporting date within 3 months the money is due considered to be short term. The amount is not given in the question. Let us consider it to be 10. Uh, 10, it is given, the answer is given 10. Term deposit with original maturity 3 years, but remaining period 13 months. Again, the amount is not given. Let us consider it to be 20. So, it will be taken into consideration. Investment in money market mutual fund 20 lakh, again current, or rather we should say cash and cash equivalent. Okay. So, we will move ahead. X limited identified operating cycle as raw material 4 months, production time 6 months, finished goods 2 months, collection period 3 months. So, I can say the total operating cycle is 15 months. Oh good, they have given you in the question as well, 15 months. They do not want you to calculate anything. Following inventory is kept in stock on 31st March 2015. Raw material purchased on 1st July 2014, 1st July 2014 and we are seeing year end 31st March 2015. So, it has been less than 12 months. We do not have any idea, the question should have given when is it expected to be consumed. So, it is not given to you. Since the period expired is less than 12 months, we will assume that it is going to be consumed within 15 months. So, assumption is on the basis of past like nothing is given that is why. So, we will consider it to be current. 1st Feb 2014, 1st Feb 2014 makes it 13 months, okay, again current. 1st October 2014, 20 lakhs, again current. 1st December 2013, December 2013 makes it uh, more than 15 months, this is non-current, this will be considered to be non-current, okay. 
what if the above inventory is finished goods and not inventory so my friend finished goods is something which is readily available for sale so howsoever old it is howsoever old it is if it is available for sale it is considered to be current so finished goods are always considered to be current remember under indian accounting standard finished goods are always current if readily available for sale so it should be readily available for sale if it is not readily available for sale you cannot consider it to be uh, current next one x limited paid an advance tax of 1 lakh whereas made a self assessment of tax of 95000 how should the advance tax of 5000 be classified <clears throat> so this is something that you are going to take a refund for and generally in case of taxes we don't know when we are supposed to get the refund so generally we assume them to be non current okay so it will be considered to be non current so my friend with this i end my indian accounting standard 1 so i hope it is understood and well defined thank you